Hey everybody, Ali Doran here. Today I'm showing you how to make super easy venison stock, actually right in your slow cooker. This is my favorite way to do venison stock because it's so simple. It's a great way to make sure we're eating nose to tail, respecting our animal, eating all of it. And you can actually do it with some kitchen scraps that you have as well for all of the flavoring component. So if you have some veggies that maybe don't look great, they've been hanging out in the fridge, don't throw those away, save them. It can make amazing stock that is way better quality than store-bought. Actually, here's some that I made earlier, but I'm gonna show you how I put it all together right now. The first thing that I have, these are just actually venison knuckle bones, and I'm gonna add them to the bottom of my slow cooker. It is as easy as dumping everything into my slow cooker. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add these veggies that I was just talking about. Here I've just got some celery. You can see it's roughly chopped, broken up. Some carrots, kind of on their last leg. Then I've got about two onions. Onion peels, if you've got a lot of that. Scraps will do. A little more carrot hanging out. And then about a full garlic bowl. You want lots of aromatics in there. Aromatics being onions and garlic. And some beautiful herbs. Here I just have oregano, thyme, and parsley, fresh. I always like to use fresh herbs, but whatever you have hanging around in the fridge also works. Those go on in, they can just settle on top. You can always add salt at the end, but I like about two teaspoons to start with with this recipe, just so it has some seasoning. You can do no salt if you want completely unsalted stock, but I suggest adding about two teaspoons and some black peppercorns, really add flavor as well. The last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of apple cider vinegar. This helps to get all of the wonderful gelatinous properties out of the bones, and it just makes your stock nice and thick and rich, and it is so amazing. So I'm just gonna go grab some water. I'm gonna fill this all the way to the top, put my lid on and set it. I like to do it overnight, so you could do like eight hours on high, and you will have the most rich, beautiful, luscious stock ever. So I have some venison stock here. I made it last night. It's been chilling in the fridge until it was nice and cold. And I actually strained it out of my slow cooker. So all of the bones and the veggies and little particles have been removed. And I like to chill it in the fridge. And you can see here, there's a layer of fat on top. I'm actually gonna go ahead and discard that. I don't like to leave that in my stocks. Some people do, but I think it's just kind of a lot. So what I'm gonna do is just get in there with the spoon and scrape it off the top. It's much easier to do this when your stock is cold so that the fat separates right out. The fat is off the top of this and I know I have really good quality stock because it's jiggling when I shake the bowl, which means all of the gelatin and the collagen that were in the bones have released. The apple cider vinegar helps to do that. And that's why it's such good quality and it's gonna be so rich and silky when you cook with it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I like to store this in the freezer. I have here my silicone muffin tin, as you can see, and it's just laying in a sheet tray. I have it in the sheet tray so the muffin tin doesn't topple over in my freezer, but I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop the stock right into these little wells. And it's gonna freeze perfectly into half cup portions. Each one of these wells is about a half cup. That way, when I need a cup, two cups, four cups, of broth or stock, I know I have plenty in the freezer. It's easy to measure and it's so great to store it this way. It also stores a lot smaller too, so you can save space in your freezer. I've got my muffin tin all filled up with my stock. It's ready to pop in the freezer. This is a recipe you guys are gonna come back to time and time again. It's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you time, and it's gonna make your dishes so much better. For the full recipe, head to my blog, MissAllie'sKitchen.com, and make sure you like, subscribe, and follow for more. I'll see you next time.